uh, dear viewers, salam alaikum all, and welcome to this new episode in our series on Islam and biomedical ethics. Uh, in the last episode, we spoke about arguments advanced by uh, those who opposed uh, organ uh, donation or organ transplantation from an Islamic ethical perspective. And as promised, today we uh, come to you with the counter arguments introduced by and advanced by those who uh, argued that organ transplantation is uh, something ethically accepted from an Islamic perspective. In the last episode, we spoke about three main arguments used by those who opposed organ uh, transplantation. Sanctity of human life uh, was the first one. Uh, what did the um, uh, proponents of organ transplantation say about uh, the, uh, this argument? First of all, they accepted the principle. And they said that it is an um, uh, acceptable principle rooted in the Islamic tradition. So there is no question about this. It is an integral part of human dignity, uh, which is uh, clearly stated in the Quran. But the main disagreement between them and the other group is that they said this argument or this principle is not relevant to the question of organ transplantation. They said that. Um, uh, um, uh, the other group, the opponents of organ transplantation, argued that um, uh, organ uh, transplantation is mutilation to the human body and thus it is uh, violating the principle of the sanctity of human body or bodily integrity. What this group, the proponents of organ transplantation, said, not every cutting in the human body is uh, necessarily mutilation and thus is not necessarily violating the sanctity of the human body. They said that organ transplantation is a surgical operation, something which is now more or less a daily routine in almost every hospital everywhere in the world. If someone went to the hospital to undergo a surgical operation, can this patient ever claim that the physician who deals with his body and cuts into his body uh, is um, uh, not respecting the sanctity of his human body? Uh, is it the intention of the physician? Is it the intention of the patient himself? In the case of organ transplantation, is it the intention of the donor or the recipient or the family of the donor? Nobody uh, can say that, um, can, can be accused that their intention is to mutilate a, a, a certain human body to violate the sanctity of a certain human body. And nobody is, 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 is speaking about this. So the principle is accepted in Islam, but its application and its claimed relevance to the case of organ transplantation is not accepted, said the proponents of organ transplantation. The second argument was about the ownership, about the ownership of the human body. The opponent of organ transplantation, they said, uh, the owner of the human body with a capital O is only God, is exclusively God. So as long as you cannot own the body, it means you cannot donate it, you cannot sell it, you cannot do anything with it. The religious scholars of this group who uh, uh, supported organ transplantation, they said, yes, God is the owner or the capital O of the human body, but and they mentioned a number of buts. First of all, they said that God is the owner of the human body. It does not apply to human body only, but to almost everything in life. For instance, in the Quran, in chapter 24, uh, Quranic verse number 32, uh, uh, God says, أتاكم, And give them from the wealth or the property uh, that, belongs, uh, that belongs to God, which he has given to you. So also, uh, mal, money, wealth, or property is mentioned clearly in this Quran as belonging to God in the first instance. Also, also, he is the owner of our property or our health. So when it comes to human body, yes, the owner with a capital O is God, but humans ha have the position of a trustee, um, a mean, trustees, umana, on the human body. And having the position of a trustee, it means you have 
some limited kind of authority on your human body. For instance, uh, millions of people around the world get compensation for their work for hiring their human body and their physical skills and capacities. And against this, they get, they get money. If we take the ownership of God for the human body to the extreme, it means that we do not have even the right to claim financial compensation for hiring our bodies and physical skills. But because we have the position of a trustee, we have some limited kind of authority that we can take decisions about what to do with our human body, that we can even gain some financial gains from this. But as long as these decisions do not contradict what God, the owner with the capital O of the human body, has specifically ordained. This is the question. So the question here should be, uh, does God, the, 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 the owner of the human body, prohibit organ transplantation or not? According to this group, this is not the case, as we will see this, as we will show this later. Um, uh, but what they want to say here is that the ownership of the human body, again, is not relevant to the case of organ transplantation. Finally, the third argument used by the opponents of organ transplantation, which was the factor of uncertainty. And here the medical context uh, plays a significant role, of course. Uh, they said that um, uh, um, the factor of uncertainty maybe was relevant to uh, um, the discussion about organ transplantation when this medical intervention was still in the beginnings. But after um, the introduction of the immunosuppressive um, um, drugs, uh, anti-rejection drugs, laboratory tissue typing, etc., uh, um, these procedures have dramatically increased the success rate of organ transplantation. So the factor of uncertainty is almost not relevant anymore. Uh, and they said even we can make it a clear condition. We say to the physicians, uh, from an Islamic perspective, it is permitted to um, get involved in organ transplantation process only if you have a, pr a, um, a dominant probability in the juristic language, uh, which is uh, rajih, dominant probability that the uh, transplantation process will succeed. Otherwise, you are not allowed to do this. Of course, they said we cannot uh, make it a condition uh, that the physicians involved should have 100% certainty. They said this is not possible for organ transplantation and not possible for so many affairs in our life that we can base permissibility in involving in these affairs only when we have 100% uh, uh, um, uh, certainty. We cannot guarantee this in organ transplantation, and we cannot guarantee in the overwhelming majority of the affairs that we have in our life. These were the arguments, the counter arguments of the group of the proponents of organ transplantation to what the other group, namely the opponents of organ transplantation, have introduced. See you in the next episode when we speak about uh, the proponents of organ transplantation again when they introduced their own arguments why organ transplantation is accepted, ethically speaking, from an Islamic perspective. See you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum.